This video is going to be about passive RC high pass filters, and it's going to build upon a few of the concepts I covered earlier in my video about low pass filters, so make sure you watch that one first. So as a quick reminder, if you put a resistor and a capacitor in this configuration, you get a low pass filter with a certain cutoff frequency. This allows low frequency signals to pass through, and higher frequency signals get attenuated. Well, high pass filters are almost exactly the same. Just swap the position of the resistor and the capacitor. Now the high pass frequencies pass through unchanged and the low frequencies get attenuated. The reason why this works is that the voltage across a capacitor cannot instantaneously change. So if there's a sudden fast change on the input voltage, it will instantaneously appear on the output side of the capacitor. So really high frequencies pass straight through the capacitor as if it was just a piece of wire. Also, series capacitors block DC. After all, they're just parallel plates that never actually touch each other and in the DC steady state, they're basically an open circuit, so you get zero volts on the output. And in between these two extremes, we get a frequency response curve like this. It's very similar to the Bode plot of a low pass filter, it's just flipped around. At the high frequencies, the signal passes straight through the filter unchanged. As the signal approaches the cutoff frequency, it starts to decrease in amplitude. At the exact cutoff frequency, the signal's amplitude is reduced by 3 decibels, or 29%. Soon after that, the amplitude dies off at 20 dB per decade, which means that for every time the input frequency gets reduced by a factor of 10, the output frequency's amplitude will also get reduced by a factor of 10. And the other cool similarity is that the equation for calculating the cutoff frequency is exactly the same as the one for low-pass filters. Now let's look at some examples. First, let's have a little fun looking at signals that have been high-pass filtered. I'm going to design a high-pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 30 kHz and feed in some signals from my function generator so that you can see what the filter does to them. Let's start designing the filter by choosing the resistor value. I'm going to choose 10 kOhms so I only put a light load on the function generator. Next, I use the rearranged cutoff equation that lets me calculate the value of the capacitor I need. It turns out that I need a 537 picofarad capacitor. Now that's kind of a weird non-standard value, so I'm going to combine some capacitors to get closer to the value I want. This inaccuracy will affect the cutoff frequency by a few kilohertz, but it's close enough for the sake of demonstration. So, with 60 hertz on the input, the high-pass filter is barely letting anything pass. At 10 kilohertz, about half the signal is being let through. You can also see that there's a phase shift in the signal. At 30 kHz, the output is roughly 29% less than the input, which is about what we expected because that's the cutoff frequency. Finally, I want to show you this example where I have a 3 volt sinusoid laid on top of a 9 volt DC offset on the input. The high pass filter completely removes the DC offset, and you're left with a 3 volt sinusoid. Another interesting thing to see is how high pass filters affect square waves. With this 600 Hz square wave, you can see that only the sudden fast edge transitions are passing through, but the part of the square wave that's just a flat line gets blocked out. If we crank the frequency up to 6 kHz, a little more of the original wave shape gets through. At twice the cutoff frequency, we get a waveform like this, and at 1 MHz, almost everything gets through. Actually, that's also because my function generator is pretty terrible at putting out high frequency square waves. Alright, time for another example. In my video about op amps, I showed you a circuit that takes tiny signals from a microphone and amplifies them so you can listen to very faint sounds. To give you a quick review, over here we have 9 volts and a 5k resistor, which are used to power the microphone. This gives us a 20 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak signal laid on top of a 9 volt DC bias. Over here we have the amplifier configured for a gain of roughly 100. The idea is that I want to take the 20 millivolts from the microphone and amplify it to 2 volts so I can hear it on a pair of headphones. Now, in between the microphone and the amplifier, I have a high-pass filter. But what would happen if I didn't have that filter? If I didn't have that high-pass filter here, the amplifier would get 9 volts DC on the input, and it would try to multiply that by 100. I obviously can't get 900 volts out of a 9 volt supply, and the amplifier's output would just end up maxed out to the plus 9 volt rail. With a constant 9 volts DC output, there's not going to be any audio, and you'd seriously risk damaging your headphones. So let's stop destroying our headphones and put the high-pass filter back in. 
The high pass filter removes the DC component of the signal coming out of the microphone, so that the amplifier only amplifies the tiny 20 millivolt AC signal. Using the cutoff frequency equation, you can see that the cutoff frequency is 15.9 Hz, so any frequencies above that get to pass through into the amplifier stage. The result is a 2 volt AC signal on the output of the amplifier suitable for driving headphones. Finally, do you see how I used a 100K resistor in the high pass filter? Well, there's a reason for that. Having a high resistance value there will ensure that I don't overload the microphone's unamplified output. As with low pass filters, you should always pick the resistor value first, then use the rearranged cutoff equation to determine the capacitor you need to get the cutoff frequency that you want. That's it for today, and stay subscribed and I'll show you how to use LT Spice to simulate complex filters.